Welcome back, guys. In the previous lecture, we have implemented mathematical expressions and also started checking the types. And today we'll talk about variables. Now, for those of you who have taken the Essentials of Interpretation class, uh, know that we use concept of environments to store variables and to look up variables. Exactly the same we use concept of the type environment in implementing a type checker. So, a type and environment is a storage for uh, names which appear in the scope, and the storage is a map from a variable name to its type. Right? In contrast with interpreter, which stores a map from variable name to a value, uh, here we store a, a map into a type. And in addition, we have a reference to a parent environment. Right? Remember, we have nested scopes, uh, as we will see later in this class, like block scope or a scope of a function, and those nested scopes should be able to access parent scopes in order to find uh, parent variables. And environment 1 is the global environment, because it doesn't have the parent link. And we'll also talk about the global environment today, uh, and we'll start handle the global variables. So the main thing here is that environment 2 has access to the three variables, x, y, and z, and also to the variables foo and bar through the parent chain, right, to, through the mm, identifier resolution process. Uh, and uh, the environment 1 has access only to the foo and bar. Uh, to reiterate, uh, the interface of an environment is uh, defining a variable, Right, assigning a new value to an existing variable and um, variable lookup, that is access of a variable. Okay, so let's switch to the implementation and start from the test. I'm creating the variable test. And let's start from the variable declaration. Yeah, so we use the var keyword to define a variable, and here we assign the value 10 to the variable x. As the result of the variable declaration, we should return the type of the initializer. In this case, it's a uh, number type. Uh, then we have the variable axis, and it also should be the type. And now, in this case, the variable x is global, uh, but we also may access some uh, pre-installed global variables, right? For example, the version variable, uh, we don't define it, but the uh, virtual machine itself may pre-install uh, some of the names already to the global object. So in this case, let's say the type of the variable is string. Okay, so let's start from the type tag. Uh, if we determine that's the variable declaration, we're going to define a variable. That is, we're going to resolve its type and install in the type environment. And for that, we're going to create the type environment class. Remember, in type theory, it's called gamma. And in the constructor, we're going to accept the record, that is the actual storage for variables and, it, and their types, and optional parent link. Again, if there is no parent, it's a global scope, global environment. Otherwise, it will be some nested environment uh, of a block or of a function. Now, to define a variable in the environment, we use define method, which just install the name uh, with a specified type. And as the result, we return this type. So that's pretty much it. We can implement now the variable declaration. So we extract the name and the value. And what we should install, not the actual value, but its type. So we have to infer the type uh, of this value, potentially doing some type checking. So we call recursively TC. And from now on, we're going to pass also the environment, right? Every time uh, we want to evaluate some expression, we will need an environment. Uh, because, for example, if we want to access variable x, we don't know which x it is, right? It might be local scope, or it might be uh, x from the global scope. So we always will be passing environment as the second parameter to the TC. And once we obtain the actual type, we define the name in the type and environment with its type. And in this case, we use the type inference, that is the type of the initializer, defines the type of the variable. Uh, but we also will support declaration with a predefined type, and we'll need to do some type checking here. Uh, for now, let's update uh, the TC function to accept environment, and also update all the calls to the TC function, passing the environment, uh, propagating it down right, So to every single call. And now let's talk about the global environment, that is the pre-installed global object, uh, which exists before program execution, before type checking. So in the constructor of the type checker, we're going to create the global object, the global environment. Let's create this helper method, create global, uh, which returns a new type environment. And in our test, we use the version variable. Let's pre-install it to the type string. Uh, so we will be able to access it. Let's not to forget to require the module type environment. And again, by default, if environment is not passed, uh, we'll be evaluating code in the global context, that is in the global environment. Sounds good, so that should work. And now let's cover the second case when we actually need to do uh, the type checking, right? Once we infer the type of the value, and if the user provides the type, we need to see and check if they match, right? So if the name is a complex list with two elements, that is an array, we need to obtain the type and compare to the actual inferred type. 
Now in the user code, uh, users will be writing types as string names. So let's introduce the method called from string on the type, which will return the actual type uh, corresponding to the string. And for now, we're going to support only simple types. Uh, remember, we store all the types on the type class itself. And so we check if the type is already registered on our type class, we just return it. Uh, otherwise, we throw unknown type. And later, when we introduce type declaration and type aliases, uh, this from string method will be creating types. And now we can obtain the actual expected type. Okay, call it from string. And then just call our expect function, uh, which validates the actual value type is equal to the expected type. And in that case, we also call the define method. Okay, so that should be it with the variable declaration. And now let's talk about variable access. So we access variables by variable names. Let's introduce this helper function is variable name. And in this case, we will call the lookup method on the environment, uh, which for now will be using just local uh, storage of the environment. And later when we introduce nested scopes, we'll be doing a scope chain lookup, right? Going in the chain of all environments. And the variable names are the strings containing some special characters. Uh, that's pretty much the regular expression. So that should be it. And now let's add the lookup method to the environment class. So first of all, we check uh, whether our record actually has this name, right? Define the variable. And if it's not, we just throw variable doesn't exist. It's not defined. Uh, otherwise, we return the type for this variable. Uh, again, I'm adding to do here uh, for the next lectures to implement parent environment lookup once we introduce local scopes. Uh, let's not forget to export type environment class. And that should be it. Uh, let's try executing and all assertions passed. So congratulations, we now have variables, declaration of the variables and variable access. Uh, let's try changing the type uh, to a string. And we correctly got the type checker error, expected string, but got number. Sounds good. And let's try accessing non-existing variable. Let's say y. And correctly, our environment lookup says variable y is not defined. Uh, finally, let's test the built-in global variable version and expect the number type. And it's also correct. It says that that should be string. Uh, what else? Let's test the variable declaration with the type, right? When we pretty much expect the type. So that should be the number and all assertions passed. And let's check the inference and type checking actually work. Let's pass the string. And that's correct. Expected number for the string. And notice since we call the TC recursively, we can pass the variable name as the value. So the type will be correctly inferred as number. In this case, we pass the variable x and assign to variable y. Okay, sounds good. So we have environments and in the next lecture, we'll continue with the uh, nested scopes. We'll start talking about blocks and going further to functions. That's it for today. Thanks and see you in the class.